On the 21st to the 22nd of May 2011, Plymouth Barbican had its Pirate Weekend. I was there to record it. Um, doing at the moment? <laughs> I can't think of any innuendo, so <laughs> I'll just say, no, I'm pa painting Mary Magdalene on the, on the Last Supper, painting, tinkering with her eye, really. No, Are you dealing in pieces of eight today? I'm a what, what, what? Are you dealing in pieces of eight today? Uh, yes. I am dealing in pieces of eight, except there's not many people with pieces of eight to, to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you. you've made your impression, Stuart. <laughs> Are you enjoying the festival then? I sure am! <laughs> oh, hurry, hurry! Oi, what's wrong with your leg? Do you want to go and see your daddy on the boat? Ship. On, on the boat? On the ship. On the uh -huh. ship. <laughs> <laughs> What boat did you come in on? Oh, that's a secret. <laughs> that one. <laughs> What's it called? Oh, bounty, I think. Isn't that a bar, isn't that a bar of chocolate? With coconut in it. Very nice bar of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Are you enjoying the weekend? Yeah, it's really good. Victoria. Yeah, it's very good. Are oh, you smoking now? Just looking at it. I'm just, I'm just looking at it. I'm pretending. Oh, oh you're the great nice. pretender. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are you famous yet? Well, I've tried to be, Chris. I keep getting photographed, and people keep stopping and talking. Some people say you're very tired. Oh yeah, well I've heard that myself, but I don't know whether to agree with that or not. <laughs> Here comes the other one. Here come the crew. I wondered when they was. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a fabulous day. I wish we could do something like this every week. It's great. It really has been a big laugh. It's really good. Back. Sorry, I hope you didn't get in the way of Are you going to start dancing to this Paris in music? Then? This is. Don't tell me now. Wait a minute. New seat. 
new sneakers? No, they were around in the 1990s. They're the nude streakers. What are you reading, Victoria? Treasure Island? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, it's a television guide. There's a bounty on. TV guide! So you're from Plymouth, are you? Yes, we're local. We we have two groups. We're normally the Plymouth Medieval Society, but we also do a Georgian reenactment, taking uh, taken from the American War of Independence. How long have you been formed? Best part of 20 years. So where, where do you do your reenactment? The medieval reenactment is locally, or we go to Tewkesbury or Barclay Castle. To France to do the Battle of Agincourt. We've done work for English Heritage in Berry Pomeroy and Oakhampton and Topness. And how, how can people contact you? Uh, our our boss, basically. We do have a website. Uh, Plymouth Medieval Society will uh, show you our medieval aspect and the. What's the uh, website? Plymouth Medieval Society. Dot com. I think if you put that into Google, you will come up with us. Probably will on the yes. Google search engine. Yes. What, and what's your name? Plymouth Medieval Society dot com. Plymouth Medieval Society dot com. Oh, what's your name? I'm Marion Pritchard. Thank you, Marion. What's your name? How long have you been in the uh, group? Yeah, about getting over 20 years. Yeah, a, long, a long time. Is there a, how many members is there? Yeah, there is. Probably got about a dozen or so at the moment. What's your name? Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thanks a lot. Raven. Raven. I've just heard that Captain Jack Sparrow is going to be kidnapped this afternoon and held to ransom. What, what are your views on this? I'm the man who's kidnapping him. And are you? They're holding to ransom and I'm not letting him go back unless I get 500 doubloons and half the ship. I heard that it's going to be at least 500. <laughs> hey, at least it's going to be 50 pounds. At least 50 pounds, yeah. And it's going to be for the local hospital? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So where, where are they going to uh, take him? Anywhere I can think of. Somewhere dark and creepy and not very nice. <laughs> How long have you been in the uh, reenactment group? I'm in the reenactment group. I've been doing it for seven years. And what uh, what made you decide to join it? Um, I met the I met the people that I do it with, very different friends. Uh -huh. I thoroughly enjoy their company and thoroughly enjoy it. Are you enjoying the weekend? Yes, definitely. Oh, and what's your name? Andrew Hosker. Thank you. Thank you. So what? Uh, you were in the sword fight yesterday. Was I? <laughs> Oh, you, yeah, were, I was. you were part of the group? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. we did um, a bit of fighting uh, up on the pier and uh, just, down, just a bit, bit further up uh, that way. Uh -huh. We will be doing it again today, uh, sometime later on this morning, probably sometime later on this afternoon. How did you get involved with the, uh, the pirate? So, so how did you get into sword fighting? From very early on, really, like I said, through uh, my involvement with Sealed Knot, I used to joust in actual fact, um, but uh, jousting is a young man's game and I'm not a young man anymore. Yeah, it were, uh, but I sustained quite a few injuries, broken collarbones. You're from Yorkshire? I'm from, we're all from Nottinghamshire. Nottinghamshire, yeah. Uh, and that's, I'm just moving, uh, normally if we're not doing this, we do uh, a Robin Hood yeah. uh, sort of enactment and then obviously a brief history. 
uh, local folklore. There are in actual fact 18 different people that claim to be Robin Hood. Um, and it's it's like through um, most of the films that you've seen, such as um, Jack Sparrow, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, to, to an extent it portrays what a pirate is, what they look like, what they did, what weapons they use. It's, it's all Hollywood pirates. Do you, do you follow these events around then? We're normally asked, yeah, you know, to, to turn up. But the thing is, we what we do, we, we lay down the, the real history and what it is really all about and um, how nasty pirates were, you know, they, they were nasty people at the end of the day, you know, they didn't... Uh, Survival of the fittest really, wasn't it? Sorry? Survival of the fittest really. Yeah, well, the pirate's life was a short and merry life, but a short and merry prosperous life. So how do people get, get, how do people get hold of you? Have you were you either killed, you know, taking uh, other ships, or you were captured, in which case, um, you know, if you were recognised as being a pirate, um, the Admiralty, would, uh, they would charge you, they would, uh, you'd, you'd, you'd basically a kangaroo court like and within minutes of being caught you'd be gone. If people want to get hold of you for these events, how did they get hold of you? Uh, they uh, basically had uh, bounties on people, um, certainly depending on who they were, which ship it were, which crew it were, which captain it were, and there was a bounty on them people and they were, you know, uh, if you can imagine that, that these people were taking an awful lot of money, um, it's like uh, a character called Jack Vinson very successful pirate. Um, he amassed a fortune of 17 and a half million, um, which in the early 17th century, um, quite a lot of money, you know what I mean? It's, it's more than most small countries had, you know, probably in Britain. Uh, so obviously, somebody that's amassed uh, that sort of wealth, that sort of fortune, uh, they're going to put a considerable bounty on his head, sort of thing, you know what I mean? So what do you call yourself? My, my character, my name is uh, Captain Lightfoot. Uh, he was a, a real character, Captain Lightfoot. He served in Prince, Prince Rupert's fleet, or he did, until so he became a pirate. Uh, he mainly sailed through and around the Oriental seas, hence the other weapons that got down here, the rifles, uh, the early. Matchlock rifles, Oriental matchlock rifles, and uh, his career was short. I think his career lasted nine months as a pirate. That nine months, he had a way all the time. You know what I mean? And that was the appeal, really, uh, to most men that became pirates. Thank you very much, Captain Ackford. No problem. So, how did you get involved in this event? I was press gang. <laughs> I'm a captain. Do you have a special name for the event or uh, for your, for your uh, part in the misery and that? Sarawak Bull. Sarawak Bull. Thank you very much, Sarawak. Cheers. What's that, my daddy? We have a carriage. Give me your wrist. Yeah, yeah. You give me your wrist and you follow me. Where are we going? Huh? Where are we going? Oh, we're going to look at it. We're going to see it. Yeah, yeah. You better give me your gold first. Oh, yeah. It's the only safe place. It's the only safe place on the docks. It's only strong box. You don't believe me, do you? Tell you what. I'm enjoying this. I'll take you in the dark. Disarm him too, I'm man. I'm man. Man. I see the gun ball There you go. Got it. Got it. Got it.
Is that valuable, is it? Is that going in my strong box, is it? I reckon so. Put it in here. Here we go. <laughs> so now you've woken the parrot. That's a dangerous thing. Get up. Oh, oh, oh. You need to wear those glasses. Oh, well, it's very like, exciting. I like, I like anything in three dimensions. Mermaids in it. It's very exciting. Oh, great. It's one dimension this more is, than normal. This is why my little granddaughter said to me, I'm going down this afternoon in my pirates outfit because they do have lady pirates. Absolutely. They do. Yeah. Some yeah, of them are terrifying. Guys, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Jens, how are you? Oh, it's you guys again. Got money on you? Well, I don't know. I want to pick you wait for pictures. All right, well, if you don't find What's happening here? You, Jack's been kidnapped have a picture first. by us. Here we go. Change him to the chair. Uh, what, and what will it take to release him? Well Twenty-five done. pounds to save Luke's. No, no, right. Who's having? A, who's taking the picture? Oh, Alright, here we go. Three, two, one. This is Luke. Thank you. You're welcome. In aid of St. Leeks, please release me. Are you waiting for your boat to come in or go out? Thank you. I'm waiting to get out of here. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> so who changed you up, Jack? Yeah. <laughs> please release me. Let me go. <laughs> you could write a song about that. Help. Good girl, Lizzie. Oh, thank you, madam. I, I'm very, very, very appreciative. So what are you doing to Jack? <laughs> I know, and I'm getting worried about it. There you are, I want a picture, you'll have to pay up. Come, come, we don't have all day, what well, we actually do, but of course, we... What time are you having Give to sell? Give money, but What time are you having to sell, Jack? Well, four o'clock, maybe a little later, 1,600 hours, where you, where with the tide. If you can get away, where are you that's up to it. next? That's, that's it. I'll be off to Tortuga, mate. Where rum flows freely and saucy wenches abound. Oh, thank you. Are we having our picture taken? Right. Here we go. I can actually stand up for pictures of this real life. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? I haven't got a gun. I could shoot the lock. Just don't shoot me. Shoot the lock. That's a good idea, isn't it? Well, hands an hour. Yes. Right, hang on, everyone put their hands over their ears. So, what are you off to next? Oh, uh, I think we're going on a little trip around there, and then we're going to get the bounty again. Again. Oh, oh, where's the bounty off to? Welcome. I don't know where the bounty's off to. Well, I don't live on the bounty. They don't let women on board ships, obviously. We're bad luck. So, I don't know where the bounty's off Absolutely bounty horrendous. Horrendous? I thought you would be the mascot on the boat team. No, I think they've got their own mascots. It's not me. No, I hang around in the harbour, obviously, and look for pirates and Hello. men with oh, money. You again. How is what's your name? I'm Giselle. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all gone. Yeah. The ice cream is gone. Come along, come along, do come there. I haven't got all day, I have to be on the tide. <laughs> is that the worby tide? Something like that. Come along, I need to be released. You must have some spare change on your love. Please don't see me rot here. Oh, you are an absolute angel. Thank you, my love. Thank you very much. You're very kind. An angel. We have our picture taken. All right, that's good idea. I wish I know I'll just drag it for a bit. Here we go. I'll just sit there next to you. You got your brakes on? Yeah. You're locked on. Here we go. Three, two, 
Well done. Thank well, you, well, thank you for the release fee. I hope we get enough money to get me out of here. All right, make sure your brakes off and then I'll make sure you don't roll away. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, love. I'll be seeing you next year, eh? Yes. Bye. Bye. Here we are. I'll stand up. Is that open? Ask them if they ever got my email. <laughs> Women in chocolate. Yeah, I know. It's a beautiful window. Look at these beautiful cakes. They're super. Look at that. Haven't beautiful. you seen them before? Edible. No, I've never been here. I think we emailed them about Mad Hatter's tea parties. It's a very tasty shop. Yeah. Thingy gone. That lady's got a bag with money in. Thank you. Should we have our picture taken as well? Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry, Doc. What's your bag with money in? <laughs> oh, what charity is it going to? St. Luke's. What we'll do is we'll drop it down the shop in a bit. Very nice. I'm a fairy lady. What's your shop called? Magic. Where's it based? How's that Jack built? Exactly. Yes. Barbican. Oh, yes. Please. Please. <laughs> Release you now. You can. Really? You yeah. sure you're happy for me to be released? <laughs> <laughs> but it's for charity. <laughs> Captain John Sparrow was kidnapped. He was. And held to ransom. And well done, £25, too. Pounds, and I think a lot of money was raised for St. Luke's. He's now been released. Oh, well, he released himself. Right, okay. Well, we'll get him to walk the plank later. Whether he wants to or not! Cheers. <laughs> yeah, about one, maybe. Uh, so, an hour, an hour and a half before we have to leave. Yeah. Pirate Tales about to start at West Quay, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is water. Let's see, come in a tiny bit closer if you wish. On the last few stories, we did one longish story, but this is going to be two short stories. And the first one, somebody asked me today if I was doing any stories with mermaids in. And I remembered I do know a short story with a mermaid in. And it comes from Wales, and it goes like this. Now, there once was a fisherman by the name of Peregrine. And he used to fish out of St Dogmails in Wales. And he was a very good fisherman, but he was also very, very nosy. And one day, he was rowing his fishing boat along the edge of the shore, when suddenly he heard singing coming from the recess in the cliffs, a little crack in the cliffs. And he heard this, I'm so long, Paul and Bracken, Paul and Bracken, I'm so weary all alone, Paul and Bracken early. And he thought, well that's funny, I've never heard anyone sing that song before. And he got his oars out and he slowly took his boat closer and closer to this big recess in the cliffs. And as he went round the corner, he stopped the boat because he could see there, sat on a rock, was the most beautiful, in fact, I've never heard of an ugly mermaid, but the most beautiful mermaid he'd ever seen, which is hardly fair because this was the first one he'd ever seen. And she had beautiful long tresses of hair, 
and she was combing her hair because mermaids, for some reason, always love combing their hair while sat on a rock. There she was, combing it, combing it, getting all the crabs and seaweed out of her tresses. Well, he couldn't believe his eyes. He got a bit closer and a bit closer. And she was so busy having a bit of a makeover that she didn't notice that his boat was coming up quite close. And then he got out the boat in the shallow and he walked up, creeping as quietly as he could up to the rock. And he thought, this is amazing. I've never seen her like before. I've never seen a mermaid. Yeah, I reckon I could make her a few bob with her down at the circus. But so suddenly, he threw his net right over her. He grabbed her over his shoulder and he threw her in his boat. And at that time of year, in that time, in St Dog Males, that was called dating. Well, <laughs> he got in the boat and she was strolling, going, let me go. And her big fishy tail was slapping against the side of the boat and slapping his face with a oh, oh, oh. But he carried on rowing the boat back to the harbour at St Dogmails. And he got her out, dragging her along the floor on the net. He got her into his cottage and he threw her in with a splunk. Well, he locked her in a room. And she was very sad. Well, you would be, wouldn't you? And she said, please take me back to the sea. It's where I belong. But Peregrine said, no, no, no. You see, I might be able to sell you to the circus or something or show you off at, at some sort of show. See the amazing fish woman. No, 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 you've got to stay with me. But she got very sad and she wouldn't eat. Even when he gave her the best cow, she wouldn't eat it. All the fish that he brought her, come on, they brought you a lovely mackerel. Not eating it. And she got thinner and thinner. And he started to get worried and he thought, maybe I should let her go. She's going to die if I don't uh, let her go. She's pining away. And his friend came round called Altan. Now Altan was far too clever for his go. He was too clever to be any fun at all. And Altan, he looked at the mermaid and he pulled a sour face and he went, Oh, you got a mermaid in here. I thought I could smell something fishy. You don't want to keep her in here. You want to let her go. It's bad luck to keep a mermaid, you know. Bad luck, said Peregrine. That's right, said Altan. The other day, I was talking to my friend from Conway, that harp-shaped town, and they had a mermaid that they had captured, and the man who had captured it, she wouldn't even give the poor little mermaid a bucket of water to dip her tail in. And you know what? She said, I curse you and this town. And then do you know what she did? Oh, ungrateful she was. She upped and died without buy or leave. And from then on, he was cursed. And he died when his house was burnt down in a flood. And the whole town was cursed. And now, of course, if you go to Conway, they're so poor that if anyone goes there with more than a sovereign, they can't change it. They have to go to the next town. That's how bad it'll get if you keep a mermaid in here. Well, Fergie thought, well, perhaps I ought to take her back to the sea. Well, Altan left, and the poor mermaid, she cried tears. But Peregrine had been told by his grandmother that you should only take as much notice of a crying woman as you should take notice of a goose going barefoot. Well, I'll fix it. He wondered what to do. Until finally, the mermaid she said, now look, Peregrine, you want something from me. And I need the sea back. It's meat and drink to me to feel the waves on my back and to feel the currents through my fins. I tell you what, if you let me go, I will come to you and warn you with three shouts when you're in the greatest of danger. I swear by the King of Lochlan who lives under the sea. So Peregrine got all right, fair news. All she's going to do is die if I keep her here and she'll sneak the house out of rotty fish. So, he picked her up and he carried her gently out to the waves and he put her back in the sea and she slipped away quietly with less ado than an otter might disappear under the water. And he never heard of her again, not for a year and a day. And then one day he was out fishing with all of his friends, they were all in their little fishing boats out some dog males beyond the bar. And it was a lovely sunny day and the sea was calm. But suddenly, just as he was about to throw out the nets once more... Oh, oh I'm going to sneeze, hang on. No, nope, you're all right. I didn't want to spray the front row. Just as he's about to throw out his nets, up popped a head. 
and at first he thought it was the head of a seal, but then he saw beautiful long tresses of hair. It was the mermaid. And she said, Peregrine, 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 pull up your nets, pull up your nets, pull up your nets. Three times she called, and he knew that he was in great danger. He was having a warning from the sea, and so he pulled up his nets, he didn't throw out another net, and he started to row towards the shore. And all the other fishermen saw him and said, Here, Peregrine, what are you doing, man? There's great lo loads of fish out here today. What are you doing heading for shore? And he said, Get yourselves in. I've had a warning from a mermaid. And they all laughed and they said, Oh dear, he's had his new consignment of Buckfast wine all the way from Buckfast Lee. He's off his head, he is. It's a lovely calm day. The sea is like glass. The sun is beaming. And none of them took any notice. And just as he got into the harbour, pulling on those oars with all his might, a great storm came up. A great wind blew with a... Suddenly, there was a rumble. There was thunderbolts, there was lightning, the waves grew huge and rolling, and only Pergin's boat was saved. And all of the other fishermen who laughed at him all of them and their boats went to the bottom of the sea. And that was how Pergin captured a mermaid and let her go. And how a mermaid kept her promise and saved him from disaster. And that is the end of my first tale. Thank you very much. So how did you get into sword fighting? From very early on really, like I say, through uh, my involvement with Sealed Knot. I used to joust in actual fight, um, but uh, jousting is a young man's game and I'm not a young man anymore. Yeah, it were, uh, but I sustained quite a few injuries, broken collarbones. You're broken from Yorkshire? I'm from, we're all from Nottinghamshire. Nottinghamshire, yeah. Uh, and that's, I'm just moving, uh, normally if we're not doing this, we do uh, a Robin Hood. Yeah. Uh, sort of enactment and then obviously a brief history, uh, local folklore. There are actual fact 18 different people that claim to be Robin Hood. Um, and it's it's like through um, most of the films that you've seen, such as um, Jack Sparrow, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, to, to an extent it portrays what a pirate is, what they look like, what they did, what weapons they use. It's, it's all Hollywood virus. Do, do you follow these events around that? We're normally asked, yeah, you know, to, to turn up. But the thing is, we what we do, we, we lay down the, the real history and what it is really all about and um, how nasty pirates were, you know, they they were nasty people at the end of the day, you know, they didn't... It's, uh, Survival of the fittest really, wasn't it? Sorry? Survival of the fittest yeah. really. Yeah, well, the pirate's life it was a short and merry life, but a short and merry, prosperous life. So how do people get, get how do people get hold of you? Have you were either it? killed, you know, taking uh, other ships, or you were captured. In which case, um, you know, if you were recognised as being a pirate, um, the Admiralty would uh, they would charge you. They would uh, you'd, you'd, you'd basically a kangaroo court, like, and within minutes of being caught, you'd be hung. If people want to get hold of you for these events, how did they get hold of you? Uh, they uh, basically had uh, bounties on people, um, certainly depending on who they were, which ship it were, which crew it were, which captain it were, there was a bounty on them people and they were, you know, uh, if you can imagine that, that these people were taking an awful lot of money, um, it's like a character called Jack Vinson, very successful pirate, um, he amassed a fortune of 17 and a half million. Um, which in the early 17th century, um, quite a lot of money, you know what I mean? It's, it's more than most small countries had, you know, yes. probably in Britain. Uh, so, obviously, somebody that's amassed uh, that sort of wealth, that sort of fortune, uh, they're going to put a considerable bounty on his head, sort of thing, you know what I mean? So, what do you 
about yourself? My, my character, my name is uh, Captain Lightfoot. Uh, it's, it's, he was a, a real character, Captain Lightfoot. He served in Prince, Prince Rupert's fleet, or he did, until he became a pirate. Uh, he mainly sailed through and around the Oriental Seas, hence the other weapons that have got down here, the rifles, uh, the early Matchlock rifles, Oriental matchlock rifles, and uh, his career was short. I think his career lasted nine months as a pirate. But that nine months, he had a whale of a time. You know what I mean? And that was the appeal, really, uh, to most men that became pirates. Thank you very much, Captain Lightfoot. This has been a Christopher Summerfield Media production. You can contact me, sponsor me, and support me through PayPal at ChristopherSummerfield at gmail.com. Thanks for watching the video.